And now our Lessons from COVID-19 series continues with a look at the challenges faced by school districts during the pandemic. As schools were forced to move to remote learning, they quickly found out where the gaps were in technology. We focused on the Hibbing and Cook County Public Schools and heard about classroom tech issues and the important social role public education continued to play during the pandemic. We are trying to like be fortune tellers in a way or kind of see the future and to determine what kind of needs we would have throughout the school year. It was definitely a learning curve for myself to find a creative way to build those connections was interesting. Sometimes they would ask why can't we be closer. It's a new world so just learning it all and we'll get through it together, we'll all learn it together. The lessons that we've learned from COVID, the silver lining of COVID, is the fact that we have learned better ways to instruct. My name is Rick Aldrich and I am the superintendent of the Hibbing Public Schools. Many of our teachers that might have felt uncomfortable with technology in the past really embraced it. The biggest you know, lesson I think that we learned is that we assumed, and I think the state also assumed, that we can just push a button and we can go to distance learning and everybody's going to be able to connect using an iPad, which all of our students have. Um, but the reality is, is a lot of kids take this home and they do not have the internet capability. Look at our neighboring districts that are a little bit more rural. They really struggled with uh, problems with connectivity. It was drive-in education for a lot of districts. Wi-Fi at their schools, opening up their parking lots, trying to create hot spots within the communities to put their resources in one spot. We heard many, many stories of families parked outside of McDonald's doing their homework on their iPad because they had, you know, they, they couldn't get anywhere else to get Wi-Fi. The other problem that we have here is that you know, we have a little bit of topsoil, but you dig down and it's rock. So it's not like it's, it's easy to run internet connectivity and bury lines in this area. Initially, we bought hotspots. That's how we got ourselves through till the end of the school year, starting March 18th of 2020 and, until uh, the end of the school year. We still have students that aren't close enough to a cell tower where this, this works for them. Every student has their own device. Every staff member has their own device. And Hibbing's been a one-to-one -one school for over 10 years. Prior to COVID, they could download homework onto the device. So all they need is power. They don't necessarily need internet connectivity to do their work. I mean, the devices are great, but if we don't have that connectivity, if we don't have that ability to reach out and, and be in every child's home, um, they're, they're basically useless. I am a sixth grade math and science teacher, and I have one co-teacher with me. Right off the bat, we set up a whole new communication system to the parents and the kids called Parent Square or Student Square. Science is a lot of hands-on, fun stuff that they can't do anymore either. So what I did for those kids is I know some of them can't go out during a pandemic and buy materials. So I would just have my fiance hold the camera for me and I would do experiments for the kids at home. Two and one. Way high, it's the highest one. I'm Autumn Clearwater Day Hood, and I currently teach kindergarten. I think at first, my initial thought was, oh, how am I going to get to know a student through the camera? You know, there are a lot of good opportunities for children to show their younger sibling or their older sibling or their pets. I got to see a hedgehog this year, which I thought was awesome. And then we would have technology issues and so families would get on the virtual chat in the morning during our meeting and they would be like you know our camera's not working sometimes it was like I can hear you I can hear what you're saying but I can't see you I can't see the meeting and I wasn't able to like upload this activity I think one of my biggest lessons from this is just thinking about you know my my classroom and what we've done in the past that maybe did create an opportunity for spreading germs that maybe in the future is not something that we're going to be doing. My name's Chad Benish. I am a high school 
science teacher at Cook County High School in Grand Marais. So speaking from the high school perspective, it was, I think inequities were a little bit more subtle. The teachers could kind of read into the situation and maybe see that. Check to see how much it bounces back up. There's some other silver linings from this. I don't know that we would have been able to go to sort of a paperless classroom without this happening. And the advantage to that is not, you know, not the sort of obvious thing where we're saving paper. The advantage of that is that students are actually getting more feedback, more immediate feedback and more frequent feedback from their teachers by using something like Google Classroom where they'll, they'll submit something. And any time I can, I can give them some feedback on that and return that to them. And that process can happen over and over again. Whereas before they turned something paper, I'd have to physically have that paper with me to go through and grade it and give them, write down some feedback. And I have to wait to see them again. There's been a real improvement on the level of what students are actually getting and actually understanding on our sort of day-to-day -day assignments because we've been able to improve that feedback process that is is really important that's a one one aspect of technology that i'll take with me after the pandemic for my sixth graders personally not everyone is the same either so different home lives going to affect with that uh, different needs so for the different resources we use for that we the counselors needed to come in the uh our lunch staff provided lunches for the kids we knew that there was all these needs that needed to be met so the whole school came together. It was really kind of made um, made obvious when the pandemic hit just how much the community relies on the school for the obvious things like daycare and food, but you know a lot of uh, connections with the computer with the community, extracurricular activities and sports and all that too. One of our biggest concerns when everything hit was feeding our kids. The mental health concerns that came from this pandemic, um, we tried to provide those services in a digital format, which again, you know, brings up all of our questions about connectivity. And education is always in the background and it's, it's always important, but it really took a back seat for a lot of the pandemic. I think we learned a lot of lessons, we made a lot of mistakes, but education has improved as a result of this pandemic.